Harvard Beats, where did that name come from? Came from actually New England. Some attributed to Harvard University, the color of the jerseys. Anyway, a very misunderstood root vegetable that's so good. So let me show you how to do it. In a pot, we're going to put a cup of sugar. We're going to put a tablespoon and three quarters of cornstarch. Then we're going to add some vinegar. Vinegar of your choice. I personally really like some nice unfiltered apple cider vinegar. I think it adds another depth of flavor that's well worth. There's not that many ingredients, so why not? So you're going to stir with a whisk the cornstarch and the sugar together. Then slowly add the vinegar in there. Mix that up because what you want to do is dissolve this vinegar. Now, I don't have the heat on yet, so be very conscious of that. We'll measure out our other quarter cup. doesn't have to be exact, but you want to come semi-close. And then you're going to whisk this until the cornstarch dissolves completely because you don't want lumps in there. And if it's not dissolved completely, you will end up with a lumpy sauce. So dissolve that, take a spatula, run it around the pot, whisk it some more. You can see the what did not dissolve just yet. Whisk it up some more until you see no white traces of anything. You could form a slurry first, but this works really well because cornstarch does dissolve fast and easy. And having said that, uh, no heat. Don't forget, no heat just yet. After that's dissolved, then put the heat on to about medium, medium high, something like that. High if you're going to stand there and keep an eye on it, or medium and you can walk away and do something else. But keep an eye on it. You want to stir it ever so often because you don't want this getting really lumpy. You want a nice, smooth, beautiful sauce. So using the whisk. Keep an eye, as soon as it starts getting warmer, then it's going to start to thicken, and that's when you really have to pay attention to keep whisking it. So when it starts to simmer slightly, you're going to move it away from the side of the pan with a silicone spatula, just to make sure you're getting it out of the corners of the pan. Again, another trick for a nice smooth sauce. And then keep, you know, make sure you're whisking. Then what you want to do is, my little secret to these wonderful beets is some fresh ground ginger and some fresh orange peel. So after that has come to a simmer and it's thickened slightly, I get a piece of ginger. This was probably about a two inch piece and you want to peel it with the back of the spoon. Then with the rasp grater or a plain grater, grate it right over the pot. You can use dried if you don't have fresh, and dried would probably be about a teaspoon, depending on how old your ginger is, your dried ground ginger, and run it, but if you're using fresh, so much better. I personally like ginger, so I'm a little heavy-handed with it. So that gets grated, goes into the pot, and then some orange peel. Now just grate it down until the white pith is exposed. You don't want to get any of the white pith in there, just the oils from the peel itself. And the orange peel is what's going to brighten this up a lot. And you don't want to use lemon in it because lemon, you've already got the acid from the vinegar. So having said that, just a little orange peel. It's really a wonderful combination with beets. Stir that in because now you have your nice sauce. Then stir in the beets that have already been cooked and peeled and quartered. Easiest way is cook them with the skin on, peel them under cold water so your hands don't turn literally beet red, and then quarter and put them into the container. I also had a few turnips left in whatever I was making, so I added turnips to this mix too. I put a little bit of salt in there. Now you want to mix them carefully in the sauce. and. Of course, you know, every good cook is going to taste their sauce to make sure that they got it right so that you don't have to adjust it later. And you want to warm these through so that the beets are fully warmed because they're already cooked and the turnips are warm. And it's such a wonderful, wonderful sauce for beets you just would not believe. It only takes probably 
seven minutes, including the warming of the beets. And the turnips, believe it or not, are a good combination in this too. You're sort of eating pickled type vegetables. So there you have it. Garnish it with a little bit of fresh orange peel, parsley. I served it with some lemon chicken and some basmati rice, and it was beyond excellent. Give this a whirl. Subscribe to my station. Thanks for watching.